Hey folks, so tonight I want to talk about the Game Boy Micro and some accessories here, specifically this extension port. Uh, for those that don't know, the Game Boy Micro itself is basically a Game Boy Advance, uh, full Game Boy Advance, just crammed into this smaller body here. Uh, and it does include full hardware compatibility with anything that a Game Boy Advance works with, except for Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Uh, but this expansion port here does work as a link port, so you can do multiplayer. Um, you know, if you buy the expensive micro cable, you can link up two micros. There's also an adapter that converts one end of the micro cable into regular GBA port here. There are Game Boy Micro specific wireless adapters, and they all work, and they're all compatible only with the Game Boy Micro. Uh, the problem is these are a couple bucks, not that much, but the Game Boy Micro version is like 30 bucks minimum. Uh, these ones in particular, you shove it into a Game Boy Advance with no game at least. It'll boot into this multi-boot ROM and you can join um, single cart multiplayer games. Or you will if Game Boy doesn't randomly freeze on you when you're trying to boot it up. There it goes. And it'll search for games, but there's nothing going right now, so it's not going to find anything. But the problem is, I can't really plug that in to that. So the Game Boy Micro itself has this 8-pin connector on here, and for those who are familiar, this is also the charge port. So two of those 8 pins are for charging. Uh, I believe it's pin 1 and pin 8 or one and eight, I don't remember which order they're in. Uh, either way, first and last pin, uh, just 5.2 volts or five volts if you have one. You can pick up these uh, USB charging cables here where one end is the Game Boy Micro connector, the other end is just a regular USB A port or A plug. I'll plug that into my computer here and then the other end Oops, that's a DS Lite charging cable. I thought that looked a little funny. That's my microcharger. Oops, I hope I don't have a uh, Game Boy. Or I don't. I hope I don't have a DS Lite with a Game Boy microcharger. That would be. Uh, whoops. Anyway, plug that in. Plug that in. It charges. Easy as pie. Anyway. One of the uh, smart folks on the Game Boy Discord ended up coming out with one of these. Uh, all you do is you take one of these Game Boy Advance ports, and they sell these on AliExpress. These are brand new, never soldered. They sell these on AliExpress so you don't have to rip apart a Game Boy Advance to get one. But this is going to connect up into this PCB here. just like that. And then you solder on the Game Boy Micro link port. And you plug that in and then you should be able to just plug in your regular Game Boy Advance peripherals and it should just work. Uh, if you have one this it would also work with one of those um, GameCube to Game Boy Advance cables. Now as far as ports go they don't sell just the bare ports they only sell charging cables. Uh, so we're going to try and repurpose this charging cable. Now I haven't seen these come in any other uh, form, but these connectors here, they do have all eight pins in there, which is exactly what we need. The problem is only two of them are actually connected because this is just a charger. Uh, even if the other six were connected, I mean, what would they be connected to? I'm going to go ahead and snip that off because all we need is this end and we need to take off this molded plug here. And the easiest way, I believe, is just to shove some flush cutters in here and work it off. Now you do not have to be gentle you got to destroy this stupid thing just to get it apart anyway. 
but we're also not reusing most of this plug. We just want the end. And forgive me, we have a special guest. Now, I think someone mentioned just using your soldering iron to melt through this. That'll work, but that's so bad for your lungs and probably not that good for your soldering iron either. We'll cut it off instead. Okay. Okay, once you get to the point where you can sort of... Uh, flex it out of there, you can just pull, and it's going to pull the whole plastic plug out. That's okay. I'm going to cut the whole thing off. We only want this part. And from here, the only two pins that are connected are, like I said, the uh, power pins, which are the first and last, as you can see. But the other six pins should still be in there. And it's okay if you break that thing off like I just did. Oh shit. I'm never going to find that again. I'm going to cut that. I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm just cutting enough to break this plastic bit off. And we're going to cut the end of the soldering, the solder ball there. And from here, I should be able to just pull this plastic out without pulling the rest of the pins up. Oh, shit, pulled one of them out. That's okay. Let me find my tweezers. This, we'll just go back in here, and all will be well. You want to bend these so they're all in line, though. You can remove the outer two pins, it's probably easier, but it might result in more wear and tear on your Game Boy Micro uh, expansion port connector, so I'm going to leave them in there. Plus eventually I might be able to hook them up to a, a secondary charge or something. This adapter, like shove a... USB type C port on there or something. I don't know. Alright. I'm just going to snip the end of this. So that it's nice and flush with the other seven pins. Okay. Now we need to take a look at this part. This whole connector is entirely too much. We don't need, we do need this metal bit because this is what, uh, what locates the pins within the connector itself. But we don't need this whole thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my flush cutters right in this notch here. Just snip on the top and the bottom there, snip. And then we'll bend this down and just fatigue it until it falls off. Just like that. And from there, I think we're good to go. Just 
insert that back in there. And that should go just on there. But this is not the first one of these things that I've built. This is, but this doesn't work. So I'm going to try and um, adjust this PCB to make it work a little bit better for me. What I'm gonna do, I'm going to take my file and cut some notches in here so that this, uh, this port itself can go inside in line with the board. I think um, Blind Eye should have done this from the start, but he didn't, and no one's heard from him in months, or I'd suggest it. He's probably fine. He said he was taking a break, and then we just never heard from him again, but I am slightly concerned. take that out of there. So, because I'm making my own modifications to this to make it work better, I'm going to try and reverse engineer it. Well, I say reverse engineer, but it's such a simple wiring diagram. It's just pin to pin to pin. It's a completely passive adapter. Um, I'm going to try and make my own. Let me get a different file here. That already has that cut out. To make it easier. So in this case, I'm filing all the way over to the golden pad on the edge on both sides. going to smooth out the bottom here. And that should make assembling this significantly easier. Because now and press the pins flat against the PCB. See, that fits almost in there. We have a little bit more to go. There we go. That fits in there. So that should just solder down just like that. Let's try it out. That's crooked. Eh. I'll have to play with that to get it working better, but I think that should be good enough. I'm going to solder one of these squares on the side first.
Now these side bits are basically uh, the mechanical connector. Not sure I really like the design, but I don't think that there's really another way to do it. There we go. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. I think that should be a lot better. And that will hold it in place while I get the rest of these connected up. So let me do this other side too. Might actually have to trim that solder back. It might be too big. Okay. So before I continue, I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break, um, let the camera cool down, and just double check that there isn't entirely too much solder on there, because there might be, but I don't know. I'll be back in a sec. Right, so I think we're good to go on the uh, anchor solder points. Next, I'm going to just take my tweezers, and I'm pressing down on each of these pins individually to make sure that it's flat against the bottom of the PCB. And, uh, sorry if you can't see too well specifically what I'm doing. There's not much I can do about that without a microscope, but... Here. The problem I had last time was that the pins looked like they weren't exactly sticking to the um, PCB. But we should be good to go now. Oh, before I do this, let's make this, let's make my life easier with some flux. Bigger to gab, better to jab. That is entirely too much flux. It's quite all right. Having a hard time getting this bridge without breaking out the uh, braid. Yeah. Oh well. Snip the end off here. And 
around. We should be good to go. I'm just gonna press on each of these pins, see if they move. See, this one's moving, so that one's probably not soldered down. That one's moving. That one's moving. They're all moving. None of these are soldered down except for one on the end, two on the end. Jesus. That's excellent, isn't it? And all I'm doing is causing more bridges. This is not easy to solder. There's got to be something I'm missing. Oh, hey, now it looks good. Except for that one. I think it was this one here. Oh, this has been out of focus the entire time, hasn't it? I'm sorry. Okay, I think we're good to go now. I think. Before I continue, because it's so much more difficult once I continue, I'm going to take my multimeter on continuity mode. And you can see when I touch these two together, the display is going to change. Show my resistance is now next to zero. Unfortunately, I don't have a fancy meter that beeps, but should be good enough. I can't really get in here. I'll lift that up a little. All right, I guess we'll start at this side. All right, so that one's good, that one's good, that one's good, that's good, that's good, and that's good. Now let's check for any shorts. Nice. All right. I think we're good to go this time. From here, there it is. I just need to attach this thing. It'll just slip in the hole there. I'm 
just making sure it's flush against the board. No uh, electrical reason, just it'll look better. I'm going to trim these flush. Again, no electrical reason, just looks better. Just put my thumb over those so that when they fly off, they don't hit me in the face. Otherwise, I think we're all done. What I should do from here clean off all that flux. And I will just, uh, oh yeah, no, I'll clean that right now because I really don't want that getting into my mic. Grow. Okay. I'm going to pause for just a moment. I'll be back in, uh, be back in a wee bit. All right. So I went ahead and cleaned up all the flux. Um, now I don't feel weird about plugging it into my Game Boy Micro. That just inserts like that. It, it goes relatively deep, but I mean, it's still still leaving that big old dongle on there. Uh, but anyway, plug in the wireless adapter, and there's no game in there, and it doesn't really clip into anything. There's not a whole lot to clip into, but let's try it out, eh? There we go. I like them apples. So it's booting into the wireless interface there. Um, there's no games because, you know, same deal as before. I've got nothing running. But uh, if I had multiplayer game, um, actually, you know what? Let's, let me show you. I got Pokemon Emerald here. I'll unplug that for the time being. And I have it saved. Uh, right at the wireless link spot, which, by the way, is totally confusing because that tile on the floor is two Game Boys wirelessly, but if you talk to that lady, she's going to complain about your link cable not being connected. Whereas this one is just a Pokeball. You talk to her, say it's the wireless club. Unfortunately, your wireless adapter is not connected properly. Well, yeah, it's in my hand. You plug that in. Talk to her again. Ah, oh, still not connected properly. Maybe we have to restart the Game Boy. Or at least go away and come back. Probably have to restart the Game Boy. There we go. So there we go. Uh, again, I can't really interface with another game because I only have one copy of Emerald and um, Ruby and Sapphire don't support the wireless adapter here. Uh, Fire and Leaf Green both do, but I don't have a save file that's any anywhere near far enough. I've only spent a couple minutes in either of those games at the moment. Um, but Beyond the wireless adapters, it will work with a regular link cable as well. Uh, also, if you're the type who has a GameCube, you plug this in, no problem. 
just be aware that it, you know, it hangs off at a weird angle and it could put some undue pressure on your uh, micro link port if you're not careful, but it does work. Anything that you can plug a Game Boy Advance into, you can plug this into and it should work. Uh, there is also, Blind Eye did make a, a 3D printable cover for this thing. Uh, you can print it, snap it on there. I did make one. Hell if I know where it is, though. Um, I'll have to print another one. But there we go. A lot easier than, uh, well, a lot cheaper than buying the Game Boy Micro specific accessory. You could just use the Game Boy Advance ones. And yeah, they look dumb. But the bill of materials for this thing is less than 10 bucks. Uh, it's probably closer to 5 I don't know how expensive these PCBs are. It's been a while, and I'm going to redesign them anyway. But the link ports, it was like 2 bucks. The charging USB cable was a little over a dollar. Come on. That's nothing. There we go. Uh, I'm super happy with this thing. If y'all got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have an excellent night.